which they do not allow cameras in the courtroom. The district court has given permission to the city to allow cameras for this administrative hearing in which deals with the disposition of a seized animal as part of an animal cruelty case against Stacy Champion. Representing the city is Animal Care Control Supervisor Dan Nagelic and Postal Inspector Jesse Swanson. All right. Is here on behalf of a case involving the animal, which was a black snout of mixed puppy that was impounded on January 25th of this year. Uh, the city of Minneapolis is requesting that this said animal, uh, which we've had um, in our care and custody since January 25th of 2011, um, not be returned to the owner, that being Stacy Champion, pending her criminal court case. Um, Ms. Champion has been charged with two counts of animal cruelty by the city of Minneapolis. Um, and as um, Postal Inspector Jesse Swanson will walk through the case, I think demonstrates the fact that um, the owner here demonstrates um, the inability to properly care for the animal as required under Minnesota state statutes. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to um, Postal Inspector Jesse Swanson, who has investigated and worked on this case. Um, and I'd like to enter for the record two statements which she will be referring to uh, some postal workers that were working at the time of this situation. Without objection, go ahead. Go ahead, Inspector. What's your name for the record? Jesse Leonard Swanson. And what do you do for a living, Mr. Swanson? I'm the United States Postal Inspector, Your Honor. Okay. What's your connection to this case? On uh, January 25th, I was contacted by the uh, station manager for the Warren Post Office and inquiring if it was permissible to use the United States mail to mail, mail a puppy. What'd you do? Uh, well, first off, this is the first time I've ever heard of, of a puppy being mailed through, you know, being used in, in the United States mail to be used. Um, you know, check, you know, check with some of my co-workers and, you know, we found that it was not permissible to use the United States mail. To, uh, to, you know, to, to mail a puppy. Why not? Uh, safety is, you know, safety for the animal itself. Um, with dealing with animals and mailing an, an animal, it has to be declared. That way, you know, pro you know, proper care and treatment can be provided for that animal in you know, if it's being shipped. Uh, I'll give you an example: chickens. Chickens can be mailed in, you know, via the United States mail, but they have to be properly declared. The box has to be. You know, you know, properly ventilated so you know, there's a proper enough airflow and the animal can you know, be, you know, knows you know, that the you know, animals can be you know, cared for and treated properly. All right, well, what happened on that day? On that day, um, the manager contacted me and advised that he believes that there was you know, an animal, or in this case, a puppy, inside this box. And when I inquired, were there any air holes in the package, he you know, advised me that there were not. And, you know, he held the telephone receiver up to the you know, package, and I could definitely hear what would, I would describe as panting of, of a small dog coming from within inside the box. I contact, you know, got the uh, information off the package for the sender and the recipient and tried to make contact with them, but they could not make immediate contact. And when I contacted the manager back, you know, a couple minutes later, he advised that the panting was becoming you know, slower and less frequent, so I directed him to open the box. Okay, then what happened? Uh, the manager advised me that indeed that there was a small black uh, puppy inside, you know, contained with inside the box. What'd you do next? Uh, I immediately responded to the you know, post office and you know, examined, you know, examined the animal, which appeared you know, to be in good health. Um, there was no food and water inside the package. There were, you know, there was an attempt for air holes, but they were sealed up over, you know, over packing tape. Go on. The, you know, like I said the puppy appeared to be good health. I took the puppy and transported, you know, along with the box, back to the uh, our field office in St. Paul, where you know my I was advised by my team leader that she had, you know. In touch with uh, Stacy Champion, and 
we were trying to figure out at that point what to do with the dog. This is the first time we've ever dealt with a puppy being mailed through the United States mail. So this was somewhat of a little bit uncharted territory for us. So with that in mind, we, you know, after we gave it some food and water, I contacted the animal control shelter here in Minneapolis and advised them what I had, you know, what we had discovered in the mail and uh, asked them for assistance. All right. And then uh, did you actually see the puppy at some point? Yes, sir. Okay. Matter of fact, I transported it from uh, Minneapolis to St. Paul and then from St. Paul to uh, back to the animal control shelter. Was the dog physically fit? Yes, Your Honor. Was it in good health? Yes, Your Honor. Of course, I can tell, but I'm not a vet. Okay. What else do you have to show me? I uh, have here the package that was actually used to mail the puppy in. Right. And here at the top, you can see, and look inside the packaging, you can see what would be the air holes, but as you can also determine, the packaging is completely encased in packaging tape, Your Honor. All right. Is there a, uh, is there a mailing on here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Falling off, did not close. It was mailed to Priority Mail to Georgia. And what do you see up on the upper left hand side? That is a uh, PDI label from, from the United States Postal Service, you know, you know showing the postage paid. Okay. In the, in the amount of $23.20. All right. And then what would have happened had that gone through? If this package was to actually have gone through, this package would have been placed in the unpressurized hull of an aircraft, um, flown at extreme altitude, where the dog would probably would have either suffocated to death or, you know, you know died due to um, exposure to cold temperatures. All right. Anything further from the from the city? Your Honor, just in, as you make your decision, as you mentioned, the city has. Um, charge uh, Miss Champion with two counts of animal cruelty, and I can indicate to you what they were for. Uh, one was for torture, cruel beat, neglect, or unjustified injury, may mutilate, or kill an animal. The other one is to deprive an animal, which he or she has been charged with, of necessary food, water, or shelter. Um, and then finally, I would ask, um, as I mentioned before, the City of Minneapolis requests that the dog not be returned to Miss Champion pending her court case. Should you find um, that the dog should not be returned to her pending her court case, we ask that you require her to post a bond with the city of Minneapolis for the amount necessary to care for the animal between now and her criminal court case. And if she fails to do that within five days, um, the, the city of Minneapolis would be allowed to disposition the animal accordingly um, because of the, the person not being able to uh, pay for the care of the animal at our shelter. The statute requires that a person claiming an interest in the animal uh, be must can and will the quote can and will provide the care required by law for the animal. What's the city's position on that? We believe, based on the behavior as described by Postal Inspector Swanson, that uh, Miss Champion does not have the ability to care for the animal as required by Minnesota State statute. As Mr. Swanson indicated, um, um, if the animal should have been shipped in this, um, there would have been um, injury, if not death, to the animal based on this particular situation. Under Minnesota State Statute, um, cruelty is defined as no person shall willingly instigate or any way further any act of cruelty to any animals or animal or any act tending to produce cruelty to animals. And I think her actions clearly show that and our concern would be that the animal might have harm caused if returned to her pending her court case. All right. Anything further from the city? No, you're not. Okay. You can be seated. Thank you. Ms. Champion, would you come up? Raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony you give is the truth? So help you God. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Stacy Champion. Ms. Champion, are you the person uh, that that the, uh, the case is about today? Yes. Okay. What would you like me to know about this incident? Well, I was shipping um, a package to my son, and I let it slip. And um, I did adequate um, postal um, with the holes and all that other good stuff. And um, I don't know. Yeah. I had everything in the I had 
water bottles and everything. There's no water bottles and nothing. And um, this stuff here was not, um, the holes in here, okay. it was not covered up in here. I mean, it was not covered. Okay, who put, that, who put that, that, that uh, tape around the edge with the little pennies and stuff? Um, this is, you can see, if you take this off right, you can see where I had the, um, the, um, the um, holes um, unsealed. You can, you can tell. I don't know. Because when I received my phone call from... You can stand back. Um, yeah, when I received my phone call from um, um, uh, um, St. Paul, they was telling me that um, your puppy has been shipped to Minneapolis. So I'm like, why is my puppy in Minneapolis, I mean, in St. Paul for it? And he was like, well, oh, this and this and this, that and that and that. Well, we're going to ship your puppy back to Minnesota. Then I called again. No, we're going to ship your dog back to St. Paul. What? You're going to ship my dog. They kept saying they didn't, they didn't know what was going on with the dog or anything. So I kept calling, I kept calling, I kept calling this lady. Her name was Virginia, Virginia something. And she was like, well, I don't have nothing to do with this. I'm going to send this to somewhere else. I'm like, whatever. And, um, but the thing so let, me is, ask, let me ask you a couple questions. Did you mail a puppy in that box? Yes, I mailed it. Okay. Yes, I and mailed did, a puppy. And, you, and who were you sending the puppy to? To my son. Okay. Yes. And why were you sending it through the mail? Oh, this is, oh, that was... Well, they said deliver. They deliver. I mean, I ship and they deliver. Okay. So, Did you consider whether or not the dog was safe going through the airplane like that? No, because they didn't have no postal on the. When I go to Lauren um, Avenue, they don't have no display of what should be shipped and what should not be shipped. And everything I know of, everything is being shipped to the you know, to the packaging company. So I thought it was okay for me to send my puppy to the United States federal, I mean, federal. Um, um, show me, show me on the box how you, how you thought that the dog would be able to breathe through those holes with the big tape over the side. No, Your Honor, um, the, the holes in the box was, I mean, you can see. Do you take it back over there? Why would I want to, um, why would I want to close the holes up in the box for? Who put the tape on the outside? The outside of the box had holes in it because he had to display the money card on it. But I didn't put all these nipples and pennies and stuff on it. Who sealed the box? Oh, I sealed the box. Room. Okay, and then who put the tape on the box? Um, I put the tape on the box. Room. Okay. Yes. And but the, and it the was tape, not. The tape it was is not, made of plastic. It was not this thick on here, Your Honor. Okay. Let me let me let me talk first. Yeah. Is it was it was the tape, uh, plastic tape? Um, some clear tape. Okay. And clear can tape. can air go through that clear tape? Yes. I put holes inside the um. I had put holes inside of it. As you can see, you can see the holes and all that other stuff. Okay. Yeah. And all this was, I don't know, they, all that stuff was, mm, all that stuff was on top of me. Okay. What, what else would you like me to know about this? You know, my, I was deprived of my son not receiving his gift for his birthday. And what is, you know, I, I never missed, never, I never missed my child's birthday by the receipt by giving him a gift or receiving him a gift. Every month, I send him a gift box to the post system. And for him not to receive his birthday gift, for his birthday, I felt really, really bad as a mom. And he's calling me, Mom, where is my box for my birthday? You always send me a box. You always send me something for my birthday. So I wanted to surprise him really, really good about uh, uh, Poodle. So, so when you open up the box, it'll be just a big surprise for me. Again. But the thing is, Yana, what parent, when you was a little child, did you ever receive a gift in a box? Like a, a, a animal or anything in a box or anything? Or just go on and tell me yeah. which one. But the thing is, though, I felt 
you know, overwhelmed and joy by that, you know, with my son. And then when I found out about this situation with the postal thing, I did my best and put the procedures and everything on it. I did my best. And for them to deny me of my um, pooch, I'm, I'm really hurt. I really need what do, what do you want me to do here today? Do you want me to give you that dog back? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Yes. Anything else that you want me to know? Your Honor, I, I would really appreciate the, um, you know, I would really appreciate it because I do want to send a puppy to my son for his birthday. And I'm just, you know, I'm human, Your Honor. I'm only human. Everybody makes mistakes in life. If it wasn't a mistake in life, society would not be the way it is right now. So okay. there are downfalls and everything in life, Your Honor. All right. So, Thank you very much. You can right. stand back. Go ahead. <coughs> Your Honor, if I could have um, Jesse uh, Swanson speak. One of the things that he didn't know was um, in terms of the declaration of the animal and what she indicated it was. So I'm going to have Inspector um, Swanson speak to that. Inspector. Your Honor, one of the very first things when you present a package over the counter, counterline that. The, uh, the window clerks ask, is there anything perishable, liquid, fragile, or dangerous in there? And in this case, she referred to the package containing a toy robot. How do you know that? I interviewed both uh, window clerks that, that were present and that assisted her at the time. All right. And and that is included that is included in the uh, in the affidavits that you filed with me. Yes, sir. No. All right. And that the toy box would be going on machinery. Is that what is that what they said? This you know package like that would be processed by you know, by mail you know, by mail machinery and you know, bulk mail centers. It would definitely be get bounced around and you know it would have to probably survive a fall maybe from that height. What the box is sitting, and it appears from this from this uh, uh, affidavit signed by Daniel Leslie <coughs> that he's swearing that that uh, that uh, the box would have to be able to sustain a drop from as high a height as the collar. The woman said yes, it could. Uh, set the box to the side of the window. The woman paid and left. Is that is that what his testimony is? Yes, sir. And she said it was a toy robot. Three yes, sir. Three or four times. Yes, sir. All right. What else? Anything else? Nothing more. All right. Ms. Champion, did you say that it was a toy robot to the desk clerk? Yeah, when I went up to the um, listen, listen to the listen to the question. Did you say that it was a toy robot to the desk clerk? Yes. All right. And was it a toy robot? No. Okay. Why did you say it was a toy robot? Because um, the lady, she was, she was, she just kept throwing the box around, kept throwing the box around. So I just told you it was a toy robot. Well then, the fact that you didn't tell her the truth about what was in the box must have meant that you didn't want her to know. Yes, I didn't it. want her to know. And is that because you thought that it was wrong to be mailing a dog in a... No, Your Honor, because okay. the postal service always said, you know, that we deliver. And so, I, I All right. Yeah. All right. Anything further but that you'd like yes, to know? I had adequate um, holes in the box. The water, the two water bottles in the box. I mean, you know, and I told her to do the express delivery um, to the um, to my son in um, Atlanta, Georgia, and she did. So, all right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any further from the city? No, Your Honor. I've heard enough. I'm going to make. Uh, first of all, let me just say that in order for me to give the puppy back to the respondent in this case, I have to make a finding that the animal is physically fit and that the person claiming an interest in the animal can and will provide the care required by law for the animal. And in this case, it appears that the animal is physically fit. No one is denying that. But I have to make, in order for me to give that dog back, I have to make a finding that the respondent in this case is, uh, is champion can and will provide the care provided 
are required by law. And I can't do that, Ms. Champion. I think that this, that this uh, mailing a, a dog in the public mail in a box like that, that small, that has holes that are covered up by tape is disgraceful. You cannot tell me that you did, that you thought you were doing the right thing. Consequently, I'm going to issue a finding of fact, conclusions of law and order that the city proved by a preponderance of the evidence that Ms. Champion cannot or will not provide the care required by law for this animal. The dog is ordered to be kept in the city's uh, uh, quarantine or the city's pound and that, um, and that uh, the proper bond will be, will be paid until the uh, pendency of the trial. Anything further from the city? No, Your Honor. Okay. And the matter is closed.